So, Savaj Zanala, welcome to our 10th session of live talk. And today we have Kiran Maharjan, a uh, visual artist and uh, street artist. And in the last session, our very good friend, Subhaksha Pradhan, she will be moderating. And uh, it's the same session. Hey, it's 11th session. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's 11th session today. And again, welcome everyone. Uh, we will be starting the sessions about action. And if you questions, please drop the questions on Zoom conversation or like or on our Facebook comments. And please join, invite other people also to this session. And now I hand it over to Subhaksha. Please take it over. Um, thank you, Rupak. Um, hi, everybody, and welcome to the talk session with Kiran. Yeah. Um, so, Kiran, are we ready? Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, so um, let me start with about uh, street art journey, but uh, no, mm -hmm. since uh, I think if I'm correct, you started with the graffiti in Pulchoko Breeze. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what exactly made you do that art or Sunny? Like, how did it happen? So, uh, start with that reason, that was a recently built bridge. And all of its like uh, surfaces were like very like smooth and fine and especially, and it was kind of secluded away as well. Mati mm -hmm. too. So like, uh, my main priority was I, I was starting off, I needed to experiment. So two pieces, I wanted to uh, uh, see, like have this piece where I could like work with some sort of ease in certain degree. So uh, I think I had like few other, I think that was on a whim of like, I need to do something outside. So I had like uh, a marker, uh, like two cans of spray paint, and uh, like few paints here and there, like not a lot of supplies, but I just went there and painted everywhere. And uh, it was an uh, interesting uh, process. Uh, before that, I had not painted anything like substantially, like with that much uh, amount of time. So the whole time I was very like uh, curious of like who were like passing by, like if people were looking or not. You know, because there was this sense of, uh, you know, like, like, is anybody looking at me right now? You know, like, so, so sort of like uh, uh, a consciousness with the work and like the things that I was doing. So, yeah. So uh, I think it was more on the basis of like, it is close by. I have like eyes necessarily close by and like clean wall, uh, enough space to like sort of do what I want to do. Mm. Um, so what did you actually med Titibala? I think it was it was a very weird like character kind of thing. So it was like a face, but it was like kind of like stylistic character thing because I wanted to experiment with like the spray paint ko fluoru and especially like pencil like the marker sketches and everything. Uh, it was kind of like facial. I don't think I have a picture of it. I should have taken a picture of it. <laughs> no picture of it, no. Uh, and you told Bokhariki uh, you were kind of conscious about whether people were passing by or not. Um, did you want people to notice you, Titibela, or were you kind of like, nah? Because you don't usually like being noticed. Yeah, you? I mean, considering being a very like uh, introverted and shy person that I am, mm -hmm. the whole time I was very conscious of whether or not people are looking and like, are they judging me on, based on what I am doing? So the whole time I was thinking, uh, probably this person thinks that I'm like making a mess or uh, I'm making something very like random or like it's not good at all and things like that. So that was uh, a kind of uh, kind of uh, interesting in a way because I hated it because I was overthinking about it, but I also was interested like how hyped up I was because there was sense of like adrenaline in. like you know like I had to do this like you know there's this time period that I have and, and uh, it turned into a sense of performance 
and I believe that is very uh, true to present state as well because uh, painting on painting in streets is not just uh, about painting in the streets, but it's more also a form of performance in a certain degree. And earlier mm stages, -hmm. much I need uh, that overthinking aspect has gone already because I think it's more to do with like being comfortable with what I am doing. Um, but there's, there's always this sense of excitement when painting in the streets, which, which is like the best part. Mm. So, Anita, did you do the old name and tag? Like, as one, two, three, five, two, three, four? Yeah, kind of. I, I would say, uh, yeah, it's kind of, I was tagging with a different tag name during that time. So it wasn't like at one, one, two, three, five. There was like a different tag that I was doing. Uh, I did a lot of uh, a lot of like illegal tagging with that tag as well. So yeah, so I don't use that anymore. But yeah, like I did like put out the name. Yeah. And how did you come up with at one, one, two, three, five? Like I'm pretty sure about Kotijana by now they know the meaning of what mm -hmm. it is. If you could elaborate what uh -huh. it is. And how did you come with it? And why this name, Vanilla? Uh, for me, I think like, like there was this understanding that uh, when you're painting out on the streets, you need to, you sort of need to have a pseudonym, not just because it's a, it is, it is a status quo, but because there is this whole aspect of representation, Manis and Sma. So that is how I took it, like how you want to represent yourself uh, in the public sphere. Uh, like with your name only with the, this like secondary name that you give so i wanted to go in this direction of like aesthetics like what is my aesthetics with my work and uh, majorly what i came to understand was it had to do with a lot of like balance balance and like juxtaposition and things like that whether it be in a technical sense uh, like uh, whether it be in like in a design sense or whether it be in a very conceptual sense so I wanted to have that within embody, my tag name to embody that idea. So, so H11235 is divided into like two sections. So H comes from like uh, this book, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson goes, Strange Case of Dr. Tickle and Mr. Hyde. So the Hyde character. So how the Hyde character is as, as in like this erratic character who uh, uh, goes on the spree of like doing whatever he wants to do at that time period. And then you have like one, one, two, three, five, which uh, which are called the uh, golden numbers, the Fibonacci numbers. And uh, if people look it up, I mean, like it's it's basically considered as the uh, rule of the universe, like this like golden uh, ratio and all of that. So it's 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 it represents to a certain degree uh, uh, a sense of order. So mm -hmm. you have H representing like chaos, and one, one, two, three, five representing order. So uh, I felt like that was like a good sort of like accumulation to kind of uh, say uh, this is my work and this is my aesthetics and I want to be represented like this. So the name represents more your work than yourself. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, and talking about these names, I know, so about me <clears throat> being naive and not from this field at all, there's something that always bugged me is like, street names or tag names so why don't they use your real name like mm -hmm. can you like shade so, I mean uh, it has a long history uh, in 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 the in the states to area when the uh, 60s ma when there was a lot of gang violence happening and uh, people it started off with this uh, sense of uh, ownership of of a, of a space so uh, like uh, people will go out, uh, write the names of their crew, uh, write the uh, secondary names uh, in a sense because they did not want to be uh, criminalized for like whatever they were doing or writing in that sense. So th there is this sense of uh, um, uh, beating the system where they don't want to be uh, associated directly with whatever they were writing on the walls. But also secondarily, uh, when you look at a lot of like artists names, uh, most of their graffiti writers, especially their most of their uh, tag names don't really make sense. It doesn't have a meaning in it. And because uh, it's usually revolves around 
uh, their uh, style of like uh, writing or doing graffiti because they pick out letters that they find interesting to play with and combine them together to kind of create a tag name. And mm -hmm. a lot of artists do it in that way as well. Graffiti writers do it in that way as well. So it's it's kind of uh, interesting to like see how uh, like people have moved on from like uh, taking in names like in different ways, you know, like uh, some people have taken in, taken in names uh, because it's very humanistic, you know, and uh, some mm -hmm. have taken in names because it, uh, because they like, like the letters, you know, and especially true for graffiti writers. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's not always about who you are as a person, but more about yeah, what not, not sure. are. I think like the, there is uh, uh, I mean, there aren't a lot of people who sort of like take their aesthetics, their, you know, the sense mm -hmm. of their particular style and put it in their tag name. Uh, people approach it in like different ways. Um, so talking about like graffiti, any, like how it started, you also like, you also started with a graffiti, you know, yeah. um, and then we see random tags in different parts of the city. Um, and some, some I feel like when I go around and, he, and you know how I like bare walls and people ruin it, I basically go like, Ech, mm -hmm. um, so where is that fine line between, you know, a graffiti art or just vandalization, especially for newcomers where they start the city. Mm -hmm. so where, do you, where do you think there is like, a, if there is a fine line at all? Uh -huh. I, I, I don't feel there necessarily a fine line. I don't think there is a division, you know, a lot of it falls within a gray area of like uh, practice or like uh, approach. So it's, it is true that uh, like the Kathmandu Valley scene has seen an explosion of a lot of like young graffiti writers coming out and like tagging places that they want to and all of that. Uh, but at the same time, you also see this uh, growth in uh, the street art scene, in the graffiti scene, in the whole mural uh, mural approach altogether. And uh, uh, I think uh, coming from a personal experience as well, I started off writing, like doing uh, a lot of like tagging here and there uh, in places that I shouldn't have done as well. And when I was like, like really starting off and when I was young and personally saying that did help me uh, become the person that I am right now you know uh, should I have tagged in certain places maybe not you know but uh, looking back at it now I do feel this sense that I did uh, do things that were not necessarily right at that time period but then again like uh, uh, graffiti is in itself a very uh, it's a very uh, rebellious act in itself. So saying it's a rebellious act, there aren't like certain things that people will follow and do in a certain way, you know? Uh, and that remains true for a lot of young artists, like young writers here as well, where they will go around and tag, where they, even though if they are told not to do it in certain places, they will do it because, uh, uh, because they are, probably influenced by certain things or they really want to do it and all of that and and I think uh, that is some that is a conversation that needs to happen within the street art graffiti uh, society among uh, like the artists and the writers itself because uh, that is an issue that uh, of course we do, do definitely need to tackle uh, at certain point in time because uh, uh, it has crept on from like private walls to from public walls to private walls to sort of like like historical areas as well where people have tagged uh, a couple of years ago people have tagged like uh, statues in uh, in in Kathmandu Dava Square area as well so there is there definitely needs to have this conversation and tagging itself is I mean like when we talk about graffiti. Uh, when I say graffiti, I mean it in a very loose term, not in an established sort of like graffiti, uh, like uh, graffiti, graffiti sense. But it is a very ancient form uh, of practice. And I'm not talking about like uh, cave paintings and everything that has its own uh, uh, way of like approach. But uh, I'm talking about like before uh, 19th century, where a lot of like after 19th century, like art became very uh, inaccessible uh, and became a very uh, 
a secluded thing. And before that, you had uh, people sort of uh, associating like with this bigger artist and sort of like uh, writing names and sort of like uh, tagging on their works because they were copying their works and uh, in a very European canon. So uh, that represents not just uh, a form of vandalism, but it's, it's, it's a sense of, it's a very uh, psychological and identity based uh, uh, approach, I think, because they would write their names uh, on these like artists or cool, like masterpieces and sort of like uh, copy while copying from that work. And it's 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 more it has more to do with this uh, sense of uh, tactile uh, uh, connectivity and sort of like imprint, you know, like and uh, majorly it's I believe it's has to do with this whole sense of like identity and like. Uh, uh, saying that I was here and I I have been here in this year uh, and like and that is very true for a lot of uh, like normal people when they go out to a certain place so usually in a very like landscapey area and they write the initials of their name plus their lovers and sort of like put it around the herd you know so that that it itself is like uh, there's a bigger big, bigger thing going around uh, rather than just uh, like just writing their name because it has to do with like identity it has to do with like this uh, tactile imprint that they're going to leave in this like majestic little space uh, where uh, they want to associate with that space in a certain degree you know and, but in a but in a very urban landscape urban uh, environment it is a different thing because uh, in the 60s, when you look at like Bronx and like a lot of like places that we're having a lot of like tagging being done, yeah, it had to do with a, like a lot of like identity issues as well, where people were sort of, uh, you know, losing a sense of like who I am in the city, where do I belong uh, and do I exist in the city in itself, you know, and uh, physically writing on walls is a very uh, natural thing for people to do from like childhood till now you know so writing on walls it's more like uh, it's it's a process for people to tackle the identity crisis in a certain way that's what i believe i'm not saying it's true but i feel like it's a it's a it's a tackling of that identity issue and uh, in in nepali context question i think it's it has uh, it has a lot of influence from whatever is happening in the european context but uh, based on our historical approach of like, not uh, like historical approach of, it's okay to write on walls, you know? It's like, because a lot of things do happen in public and uh, it's it's okay to write on walls and you have like uh, uh, like festivals like Saraswati Puja where like kids go around writing on, with like chalk on walls in like different temples and everything. It's, it's kind of expected to a certain degree, but, um, yeah, I mean, but in a very uh, graffiti, European graffiti context, uh, there needs to have, uh, there needs to be a bit of conversation on that topic, I think. Um, and talking about it, Rubita just asked, you know, did, you got, did you get the legal permission for street painting or you just went there and painted? And did you face any problem because of that painting? Uh, the, the first piece that yeah. I did, right? So, this much, I, mean, I don't think, uh, I I, uh, I don't believe I took permission for a lot of like works that I was doing at the beginning. So most of it were in like public spaces, like public walls, like, you know, so I did not take permission for that. Uh, and uh, uh, I just like, I mean, like I just went there with my supplies and just like decided I was going to paint. So I painted and then came back and uh, I did not face any issues with it because Probably because I was doing it, doing it during the daytime and not during the nighttime. It's interesting because when you look at it uh, compared to like in the European context, it's much more safer to paint walls here during the daytime than the nighttime compared to like, you know, other, other like European countries. Because in nighttime, when you are doing painting a wall, the cops will necessarily like, like directly associate it with like something illegal, you know? Because you're doing it in the dead of night, you know. So, yeah. But that time, I don't think I like. I don't believe I got into any issues like, with with any. Yeah. Okay. Any any other piece that you got into issues? Has there any uh, issues wise? Uh, 
I think I was yelled by a woman in both the uh, because I was painting this wall and she yelled at me because I think it was one me. I think it was one. It doesn't matter. I think she yelled at me because I was obstructing the traffic flow at that area because it was a very narrow street and I was painting a wall right along the alleyway. And she did yell at me saying, you know, like that okay. I am obstructing the traffic flow and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but usually, usually people are nice like they they are curious they appreciate it and mostly they want to know more about like what i am doing um talking about that about the piece it's not there anymore eh? is it it's not there anymore it was it was funny because uh, uh my a couple of my french friends like from frozen cactus they were making a video like a series of videos about like different artists who were here uh, like who are practicing like underground like music like graffiti street art and all of that so they were here and they wanted to take pictures and video clips of that wall and i was taking them there and i was like just on the way there in the uh, like during the drive i was telling them that it would be really funny if the wall is not there because we had like we were going through like half an hour of like uh Kathmandu traffic and everything and we and i was like joking the whole time like it would be funny that i won't be there you know and we get there and it's not there so they had broken down the wall and they had built a shop like with shutters and everything but you could definitely see traces of like the background paint and all mm -hmm. the way on the bottom but yeah i mean <clears throat> it wasn't but, there it was uh, quite funny there. so what does it feel like Antony, knowing that your artwork will not be there forever you know when you usually have a, when you think about artist or at least when i think about artist you create something so that it remains mm -hmm. there even if long after you're gone or so mm -hmm. that art suppose you do halko tara um timbro case ma or street art ko case ma ta like it won't you will you never know when it's gonna go you know but even if like wale break down na gare pani somebody might paint over it so how does it feel to know that your work is temporary mm -hmm. yeah i mean uh, that's that's uh that's uh uh, uh, situation that we have to sort of like uh, being associated with like mm -hmm. because like we as street artists graffiti writers it's not necessary that our works are gonna remain there forever you know and there is this sense of like impermanence and uh, um, like you know impermanence that is very much associated with like a lot of works done illegally or legally uh, in certain ways so uh to be i think uh, uh i think that's the one of the like charms of like street art or graffiti you know because it's there for a moment you know it's there for a moment and it and it, it, it when you paint a wall it 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 becomes part of the landscape so uh if you put something on a wall like uh, it becomes part of the landscape, it becomes part of the houses, it becomes part of the lifestyle of livelihood of the people around there as well. So it changes, uh, it's, it's an act of uh, uh, urban hacking to a certain degree, but not necessarily, I mean. Uh, so it becomes part of the landscape, but uh, uh, it being impermanent sort of uh, makes it interesting because there is this association that uh, artists do always necessarily have that uh, my work is here like i need to preserve my work i couldn't i put so much work into this work and this is my work and and it's not wrong for artists to think it that way but um, but i think uh, when you're working on a wall when you're painting a wall it uh, it belongs to you it's it's your uh, it's your like piece but after you're done with the work uh, it it's not your piece anymore. It belongs to the community that you paint in the area. So uh, it depends upon them, like what they want to do with it. Do we, do they want to like preserve it and sort of keep it for like, you know, and mm -hmm. keep the area like clean and everything. It, it, it depends upon the community. If they want to like remove it because they find it very garish and they are not interested in whatever you are saying or painting, uh, it's up to them, you know, like, uh, and I think that's an interesting part because like it keeps you humble to a certain degree. It keeps you humble. Uh, it keeps you always uh, seeking for more because like 
you paint a wall and you're saying that I've painted these many walls, but they are not there anymore, you know? And it keeps you on the loop of like, uh, keep on painting and sort of uh, making sure that uh, your works are always there. You know? mm -hmm. And talking about how you said, Ki, once you've painted the wall, it belongs to a community, you know? Have you, do you think community like involved Gurna is important when you're painting the wall? Because after, at the end you're doing it in their space. Mm -hmm. uh, there and because like especially Patanma, there are so many street art I live. Mm -hmm. and, he, and I sometimes wonder whether there was a community input because most of the artists about you live in Patan, that's a different thing, but mm -hmm. most of the artists don't come from that community where it's been painted. So mm -hmm. um and and being Patan itself being us like on Lalitpur, city of art, one in or Kathmandu Valley or any other space has their own aspect to it and so they got say community involvement or community um i mean i think it depends upon different artists some people just like do a particular set of like style and like works that they usually do and they just like travel around and paint in different places in the same image over and over again and uh, uh, some artists make sure that they involve community, like they make sure that they reach out to the community members and like talk to them and like make them part of the whole process. And it's fine as well. And uh, whereas me, I, I do like to be conscious of the space that I'm painting in, uh, what the history of that space, like, uh, people who have lived in there, like the mindset of that area, like the stories of that area. I want to be conscious of that uh, particular thing because uh, I believe uh, if you're putting up something uh, permanent or like something that becomes uh, part of the landscape, uh, you have to be very conscious of uh, what you're saying in that space because it's a very big statement to make in a community and people have to live with that particular piece for a long period of time, you know? So, so in that sense, I, I, I feel uh, it's, it's very uh, uh, subjective to like uh, different artists, you know, like whether or not they want to have it. I don't think uh, there's uh, necessarily a hard and fast rule uh, if it's necessary or not, because everybody has different approaches. And I think that's like one of the interesting approaches to it because it keeps it very diverse, you know? I don't think like, uh, it's it's necessary to like have a, a association of community, but if it's there, then it's even more better. Um, and talking about community, I and mean, like I've mentioned, you're from Patan, and that Patan are uh, basically is a city of art. I mean, I think if I am correct, Patan has more traditional murals on the walls than the mm -hmm. other towns. I know, I mean, and then since you do work in wall. Mm -hmm. Do you feel uh, this source of, of this of a like, like kind of like you're associating with yourself with that? Then because if it goes to my like, then you pardon for art play, timo art play. Well, suru mazen start go the hezaini. I was very influenced by this uh, European sense of like street art and graffiti. So. Uh, and that was like my main driving force and like this is happening in all over the world you know like this is interesting i should uh, i i am interested in this as well but since once i uh, i was kind of doing it and there were other variables that led me to it but uh, uh, there is this uh, sense of like being from Patan and sort of like walking around and like when you go to Patandava square and which was like the hangout space for me and my friends for a long period of time, uh, you see a lot of these uh, so like buildings and like temples and murals and images, whether it be like architecture format, 2D format, 3D format, or like in different ways. And uh, my association with these images and these uh, uh, entities in these uh, in, in, in pattern has changed with my uh, with my art practice uh, in, in certain mm -hmm. ways. Uh, so at the beginning, it was more uh, 
I was very much like trained, like as in other artists uh, in Kathmandu to like paint like temples and sort of like, you know, like look at them and sort of like try to copy them in paintings. Uh, when I got interested uh, in graffiti and street art, I wasn't necessarily interested in the traditional aspect of it, but I wanted to include that in my work. And that was usually with a lot of like direct um, copying, you know, like like taking inspiration from their work and sort of uh, inspiration from that elements and putting it in my word and making it uh, uh, sort of mine in a way. And that was my major focus at the beginning. And then uh, later on, like uh, when I'm sort of like working with different uh, images, uh, these images do pop up, like traditional images do pop up in certain ways. But, uh, but now, uh, especially talking about like uh, uh, murals, like wall paintings that are there, like done traditionally in like in Kathmandu, like in like in Kathmandu Valley in Patan areas, uh, I have uh, started being interested uh, in them more from a research perspective because uh, I feel like there is this divide uh, of like street artists and like graffiti writers who. Uh, who belong from a space like Kathmandu and like Nepal, you know, that has a rich history of like uh, traditional arts and crafts, but uh, we are following this European uh, canon of like art making. And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's kind of sad for, for the historical aspect of it because uh, uh, it's being left out, you know, in a certain way because it's maybe it's not cool you know like people don't associate it as being like cool in a certain way so so for me now i'm very much interested in that uh, in a very like research ap approach uh, and i necessarily don't use a lot of like traditional imagery in my work because i strongly feel that i don't have enough research and enough backing uh, in whatever i am about to do so I usually take like little snippets of it and use it, but being very uh, conscious of the context and the like the religious significance of it. Uh, but I mean, for presently, I, I'm interested in like the religious, like the research ap approach of it and like uh, want to study these things uh, so that uh, they are better represented and also for my art practice in a certain way. Yeah. Um, but you know, you, you do use calligraphy, like, so regarding that there is a question from super super um how did you get inspired like calligraphy styles i consider inspired by i think that's what she meant calligram do you have any origin story or something uh calligraphy i think it was uh it it started uh, coming in on and off. So beginning phases, uh, when I was very much interested in like uh, graffiti writing and graffiti letters. So I was doing like a lot of copying, a lot of like European sort of uh, letter writing styles and like how uh, they are like formed, how they are broken down, how they are stylized in certain ways. So this way I started uh, making like uh, Nepali, like Koha Vavo, many different like graffiti letter style, masai, like to stylize them. And the Gauri and this uh, it was, uh, then I, I think I ran across uh, uh, like uh, El Mac was uh, collaborating with some other artists, I forgot his name. So he was doing a lot of like letter based uh, uh, imagery in his work and and that was interesting for me and that kind of made me think like uh, there's this interesting uh, style uh, that is going around uh, um, and i was interested in letters from the beginning only because uh, during my high school years uh, when i was working a side job of like working in a shoe store and sort of like dealing with a lot of like crappy clients at that time period my sense of sanity during that time was uh, uh, taking out the shoe boxes and uh, most of them would have like a Chinese text on them and try to like imitate that particular text and sort of like stylize that uh, particular one. And uh, uh, Ranjana Lipi was interesting to me because uh, I, uh, I felt that uh, this was during this time when I uh, started uh, thinking that I need to have a, a, a lot more of me in my work. And, uh, I felt that it was uh, 
uh, it was an interesting, I, I was already uh, always interested in the particular style of it. And I felt like, okay, I should start probably like using this in my work as well, because like, it's like stylistically, it's very uh, like, it can be replicable uh, on walls uh, very like, uh, you know, in a very beautiful way. So that, that I think became my uh, sort of like the origin for like the uh, Ranjana DP. Okay. So um, coming back to the community, you know, and I think this is something Sabrina also asked, and this was something in my question for me about, you said ki, um, like, Agitiragi, Nepal maze compared to Baira, public are more uh, accepted, acceptive of um, street art. And then they appreciate it, they uh, get curious about it. And I like say mindset cost us perception cost us compared to beginning you know first question said that is because i think few years back a year back Kalo 101 did posted a story about two artists who were taken into custody by police because somebody complained that they were doing the street art and the second day sabrina go question this might say about let me add how do the people of community mostly of old age and from traditional mindset react to these murals that you do so uh, beginning stages when we were painting like when i was associated with art lab and when we were painting out in the streets people will think that people usually thought like advertisement oh kiko like advertisement oh one the surumas in question work you and like or whether it was like political party ko like lihira ho ki abo advertisement ho and go that but like sooner or later it, the whole mindset changed because uh, uh, local people started seeing a lot of like uh, murals around in the city and they saw it as a form of like art in a sense you know uh in in a, in a general sphere in a general understanding but uh the traditional uh traditional mancheko mindset i mean it's uh it's it's interesting to see their reaction to it because this is something that i've like understood uh uh and like came to realize is that uh, I mean like I might go around and paint a wall uh, uh, in a in a space uh, uh, you it can be in a very traditional setting it can be in a very urban sort of like uh, uh, boxy setting but you know like but uh, I might have this like idea that I want to paint this and I would paint that and it's uh, it's interesting because like a lot of people would come and ask you uh, what you are painting or what you are doing and uh, uh, we would necessarily say like okay like I'm, this is my idea this is what i'm painting and uh, uh, these are my ideas and like this is this is what i'm basically doing and it's it's uh, the people will like uh, nod their heads and just like walk away and mm -hmm. Uh, it, uh, and sometimes there's this uh, association like people will come and start talking to you about like works and like uh, they have like I've met a lot of interesting people while painting walls on the street like you know like people like who have been like chess like national chess uh, players for the country or like just like random people who are like so much enthusiastic about art you know and but for a traditional uh, like you know like all these people and in a very traditional setting uh, their association of art and public art is very religious it's it's either like you're painting a, a religious imagery or you are doing something very different which is like uh, uh, like you're advertising a product or something and if you do use a very uh, traditional imagery in your work and paint it in a like in a very traditional sort of like uh, uh, setting in an environment they would uh, feel uh, drawn towards it and they would want to know more about it because that is their association with it and uh, this there's nothing wrong with it uh, you know like that's how uh, like the old age, old people have uh, uh, seen like things happen but uh, it's it's interesting to see how like these two like generations kind of like colliding because of this like platform you know because younger artists uh, being inspired whether from like traditional style or from like European style they are going out into the public space and painting again in public spaces and like old people like sort of seeing that and sort of like because I feel like it's a conversation starter for like a lot of situations and people will sit around and just like start talking about like what they are doing and the, the 
then the old age people, like the old people will start like talking about their history and like, oh, where they live and like, what do they think about that work? And they might start sharing stories about that particular uh, image or like God or like what they think in a certain way, you know? And that I think is a very interesting uh, thing because when you look at Kathmandu Valley historically, a lot of things do used to happen publicly, you know. It's like uh, architectures are public, jatras are in you know, a public space, and uh, weddings are like everything is like in public. It's it becomes a festival. It becomes a thing that everybody associates with. And uh, with this, uh, after like 19th century, with this like European uh, aspect of like moving art inside, moving it inside galleries, and making it accessible to certain people on the uh, is a is a is a deviation from how traditional form of art and art practice was practiced in like in in Nepal. So and I think like uh, that is something to be understood by like uh, street artists and like people who work in public spaces in general. That there is this like rich history. There is this association. Uh, there is this like wider audience, you know, like whether it be old people, young people, you know, and that is something that. Uh, everybody uh, like I feel like uh, street artists need to understand okay. um, and uh, then coming back to uh, you yeah. as an artist and uh, how how many years has it been right you started since 2014 15 uh, I was doing uh, graffiti sort of like lettering text and tagging I think like 2010 I don't know 2010 probably 9 10 11 but i was like tagging just like doing it very like uh, as a whim as something that i was like interested on the side you know mm. 10 11 i think so this question is from facebook ramita moharjan Shrestha ask how do you feel you have grown as an artist because it's been a long like almost 20, 10 years one no <clears throat> mm-hmm. i think uh, one of the biggest thing that I've uh, come to understand is like, you don't need to fit in a box, you know? So when I was starting off, uh, you see a lot, a lot of these graffiti writers and street artists, and there is this a certain stereotype that you need to fulfill, I feel like I felt, that is what I felt. Like you need to fulfill to be a street artist or a graffiti writer. You need to listen to hip hop music. You need to listen to, like, you need to wear certain type of flutes. You need to talk in a certain way. You need to have, like, uh, tattoos and you need to have a lot of, you know, like, there was this box that I was associating as, like, okay, these are the things that makes a street artist. Or these are the things that make graffiti writing. And, uh, <clears throat> like, um, within this, like, time span, I have seen and I've experienced, like, uh, like seen and like experienced people coming out from different areas and different backgrounds and still making amazing works on the wall, uh, whether they are coming from very academic background and like completely denounce it and are making uh, these like amazing murals that are nothing that they were doing at the past. And you see this artist coming from this same background, like from historically same background from this like, poor neighborhoods and, and still making it like bigger in a, in a, in a, in a, in a international sense i think like this whole aspect of like fitting in a box was is very uh, uh is very is an idea that has been pushed a lot and that's like uh, it's there's nothing wrong with that because there's this uh uh, there is this like philosophical sort of uh, uh, association with it and like uh, coming from like the, the, the hip hop scene and everything. There is that, but like it doesn't necessarily matter that uh, whether or not you do, you listen to rap music or not. You could probably listen to like Taylor Swift and still make amazing works on the wall. And that's completely fine, you know. It, it has nothing to do with like uh, the hip hop or anything. What matters is like what you do on the wall and like how much honesty and dedication you put into it and like yeah, how honest you are to yourself as an artist. Mm-hmm. Ani, talking about like how you grew as an artist, do you think, uh, because you did BFA from mm-hmm. Ani, do you think um, having that education background in art kind of helped you become who you are and kind of help you grow or do you think it's not exactly necessary because there's always a talk on something like do you need an art education background? Uh, you, do um, you need to school yourself? Uh, 
I, I, I do believe you need to, but I do believe you don't need to as well, because I'm kind of drawn with that aspect. Uh, I, I did my bachelor's level in KU and uh, the four years were very substantially important for me to uh, grow as an artist. Uh, and there were a lot of like growths that happened, like uh, my mindset changed a lot and the way I approached uh, art thing had changed a lot. And uh, <clears throat> so during those four years of time, uh, so I went into, uh, into the university with a one mindset of like making these amazing realistic uh, uh, like images uh, in canvases and like putting them out for exhibitions. And that was my particular idea. By, but by the end of it, it kind of changed to uh, being more about uh, like, you know, like being, being more related to like a conceptual uh, uh, basis rather than a technical aspect of painting. And uh, so I got into the university uh, like with this mindset that I, so I will try everything that is within the sun of art, you know, like I'll try like uh, from illustrations to painting to installations to everything that is possible that I can do. And uh, my particular idea with that was like, I will try everything and by the end of four years, uh, I will have uh, subconsciously decided on what I want to do and what I don't want to do. Uh, and that is the particular approach that I worked with. And um, I have stuck, I have been like, I'm stuck with like, uh, like street art and sort of like illustrations and like comic books and, and like uh, a lot of that. And, and I think that was uh, like a crucial time period for me. And, uh, and I think this was a conversation that I was having with somebody, uh, somebody else in the back as well, whether or not academic education is crucial for uh, artistic growth uh, like maturity in a, in a form of work as well and uh, it it is uh, i mean like personally i do feel that it helped me change uh, how i approach art and how i take a concept and push it forward to be, for it to become more than an initial idea and push it more to be a very mature idea in a sense that I will start questioning whether or not a medium is necessarily the, the right approach to talk about I, that idea or whether or not that image is necessary or not, you know? So in, in a sense, I'm very uh, uh, methodological and sort of uh, technical in a sense, like, uh, I'll start questioning each and every element in a in a piece and whether or not that is relevant to put that idea forward or not. And uh, I don't know, I mean, like, I feel like it had changed me. I mean, like academic education has uh, impacted my art making process, but like, you know, uh, it might be uh, different for somebody else because like my whole practice of like street art, uh, I did not learn it in a university setting, but it did like help Mm -hmm. uh, me create the works that I'm creating now. Um, so you can say that it kind of exposed you to this very broader aspect of what art could be than what you thought it uh, could be. True, true. I mean, like the whole, uh, I have focused, started focusing more on like uh, uh, the concept, you know, like whether or not like a concept is interesting or not and how I can um, actively and sort of like uh, with a lot of like, you know, I mean, whether or not I am able to um, put forward that idea conceptually in a, in a, in a medium or not, I think that that has become like a major focus for me as well. So talking about exposure, you've also been exposed to international art scenarios, you know, like with the festivals that you take mm -hmm. part, like your work has taken you everywhere. Uh, how do you think that has helped you to grow as an artist? Nay, any have you do you feel that whatever you've learned when you were taking part in these festivals or when you were painting walls mm -hmm. internationally, um, uh -huh. have you brought something back with you? Uh -huh. like learnings or uh, I think uh, art practice wise, it has always been uh, interesting for me because like uh, like whenever I'm the process of like painting, like the process of like working has always been like this idea making and like idea generation and like painting has always been this like streamlined process for me, whether or not I'm changing from like 
one or not. And it has been like in, in, in that particular uh, direction. Uh, so uh, I've, I've been to a couple of like uh, street art festivals in different parts. And uh, uh, it's interesting to see how uh, they do it technically in a way. Uh, how they associate with how they associate with artists, how they take care of the logistics aspects of it, and that has been like one of the biggest learning points for me, and like how these other people are doing it. And uh, another thing that has been like substantially uh, big for me is like meeting these artists. You know, like um, recently, I like one of the last international trips that I did was uh, to uh, Varanasi. Uh, and uh, uh, I was invited by Mozart to uh, Mozart to art, like to, to come and paint in like Varanasi, a wall by the cart, and it was an amazing wall and like by like, amazing location, and I and I got to meet like uh, like one of the artists that who I whose work that I had been looking for like quite some years, you know, like like Devin Max from like Australia, and meeting the guy and sort of like interacting with him, not in a very artistic like artist level, but in a very like one-on-one -on -one human level has been interesting and meeting like uh, Martha Cooper in Delhi like you know like all, all of these people who I have been like looked at looking at and and always saw as these people that you know like were in a different world and like being part of festivals has helped me like uh, bridge that gap and uh, like get to meet these people and I, I think that has been the biggest aspect for me uh, to learn uh, because like you meet these people and like you know like these are just like normal people like who just love making art and I think that has been uh, one of the uh, crucial things for me to learn is that it doesn't matter like how many Instagram followers you have it doesn't matter like how many works that say you're selling but it it's it's crucial to be like uh, honest to what you're making, the, the type of work that you're doing and being conscious of that and sort of like, you know, keep pushing at your art practice. And I think that has been like, like the major thing for me to learn. Yeah. Um, talking about your travel, Gunte on Facebook just asked, uh, as an artist, when you travel outside the country, what kind of impression do you think people give you as an artist? And how do you think audience in Nepal react to guest artists and local artists? Um, as in like when I'm traveling outside, like what is the impression that I leave or they leave on me? I think what kind of impression do you think people give you? I think what kind of impression that people get from you? So the first question is that and second question say that Nepal is about local artist or guest artist. It's a local reactor. So is there any difference? Uh -huh. So when I'm going on like these trips, uh, uh, it's it's like coming from Nepal, this like third world country and like a place that n normally people don't associate with like as like a big place for like street art. Uh, there is this like a sense of uh, curiosity as in like Nepal, as in like when did it start, like all of that. So uh it's it it sometimes it reaches to a point of being like this uh being like this uh curiosity you know rather than uh, rather than being about uh the art you know like it's more about like you know like all oh, right like you know like this uh there's like people in uh, in Nepal painting walls as well because I thought it was just like mountains and like you know rivers and um, all of that. So, and that is something that uh, I did uh, talk about when I was in like Eugene, Oregon. I had I gave a small talk in like a small talk uh, in in one of uh, in uh, LCC like Lean Community College. Uh, so I give a small talk and talking about like uh, how uh, it has shaped and like how uh, it's necessary to understand that even though I come from the land of Mount Everest and Lord Buddha, I have never been to the Mount Everest and I've never been to Kimbini, you know. So that was an idea that I had to like put across that, you know, yes, uh, there is that, but there's also this, you know. <clears throat> so 
and it's very i think it's it's i i did feel a sense of responsibility that i was representing the nepali art scene nepali street art community and it, there was this sense of responsibility that i felt and i made sure that you know like there is this good representation that i was representing like the people and the other other amazing artists that are working here like really well and uh, and i think uh, people do take it uh, seriously if you take yourself seriously as an artist and that, i think that kind of helped uh, uh, like how people saw me in that particular uh, in, in in like all of those uh, pieces and when you talk about like international artists coming in and like when you put them in with local artists uh, there is this uh, interesting like mindset that we nepali people have that Khairi is like the the better like artist like the Khairi knows everything you know, and it's not necessarily true you know there are a lot of like better artists here as well who are doing like more amazing work than a lot of like European artists, uh, but you know like I think like it's 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 something that is like uh, that we have been you know like taught in a certain way that we have been you know contextualized in a certain way, and uh, uh, but it's crucial to. Uh, understand that uh, even though uh, these artists are coming in from the outside they are sort of they need to be taken care of but there needs to be equal representation of like local artists and international artists when whenever there is like street art festivals happening or like uh, you know like all of these other things and i think uh, that usually gets lost in conversation people don't usually like understand it take care of it because you know like people want to want other people to like them and they want like this white like uh, international artist to like them <laughs> and and i mean like it's not their fault but you know like yeah. it's necessary to like have that equal balance i feel mm. um so talking about like unsani um international people coming here and working you've always been involved in these collectives where by what artists have come and and worked you know like you were first involved with art lab and then now you're involved with core um and i've never seen you work alone alone like at least nepal ma um and there's something that i get a comment when i talk about you to my friends and they're like usually street artists are ekle kaam garcha so lagte ho but kiran's always working in a group how important it is for you to have that collective and the community sunny and why mm-hmm. uh i think uh it has uh, mainly to do with like two things one is that uh so basically because you have like more hands to like carry the buckets around to paint you know and that's that's easier it's faster to paint that way as well you know it's easier that we and uh, it's in street is a very uh, unforgiving space it's it's difficult uh, to bear with the, the heat the rain and like dust pollution and everything and it's 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 fun it's it's nice to have people around that you love uh, to paint with you know and i think that's uh, that's uh, true for me and i believe like my collective as well because whenever we want to do a project we usually do it together you know until and unless it's a very personal project people will do it by themselves i don't like you know but usually whenever it's 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 a it's a it's a massive world it's a commission world or uh, work or it's a project there is this like sense of uh, like brotherhood you know that like, okay like let's do it together when this sense man and it's nice to collaborate with people because uh, it's uh, because i i feel like it's not the end kiran ko internet aur gaya okay um so kiran's i think internet is not working it's ama uh till then i guess you guys can ask questions <laughs> uh well, or like unsani follow satya uh on facebook instagram um go through their website suraj has made amazing website um on this pc and also follow kiran on instagram he doesn't update much but when he does you are you want more just so also follow me if you want to <laughs> uh 
um so yeah like if you have other questions like continue keep them coming um this video i think will also be posted for youtube ma so in case you missed it or you think um your friend is missing it out then do tell them like once it's share share it with them um share it with your family friends um so there is a question saying how long is this zoom meeting we are planning to have this till 4:30 um so let's see i realize i guess i mean i really need a chia so maybe it's time to have tea like that's what robic is saying <laughs> uh yeah, because you know i mean since i'm doing this maile agi start garnu bhanda agadi nai hunchha ni start ko lagi bhanne chia le raheko start bhanda agadi nai sidhyo so while we wait for kiran maybe we should do chai yeah, look everybody is chai fan man like yes this is my team let's do um rupak did you get a chance to talk to kiran um uh, his internet got disconnected re and he is trying to get back in uh, he will be here in few minutes ala allah this way that in the like if you guys want to go and make some tea <laughs> let's do it i wish i can also go but i'm just going to wait for kiran um like any other questions please do unjani post it like facebook ma ani this way zoom ma pani conversation ma ani like i said if you think unjani like you're going to miss this ava gaira ya if you think one of your friends should actually watch it but then is missing uh then once this video gets uploaded on fake re youtube do share the link with your friends and thank you ruvita for saying you can make chai for me you know what my brother is here so i'm just going to ask him like if he's going to make chai for me i right, like i'll be right back All right, my brother is making tea for me. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Somebody, so as I um, can you do you want to try the video that we were planning to share? Oh, okay, Kiran is there. i think yes, yes. <laughs> i don't know what happened i think just like my zoom like sort of net ko problem i guess uh, i was like oh my god am i got to say bolnu paryo bhanera sochira chai like entertaining the crap but then that's what i do nak <laughs> so yeah what where we we were talking about um, collective how do you why do you work with community uh-huh and then why do you have a community with you all the time when you go people around i think it's more about like i'm like mm-hmm. you were basically telling about how having people around helps you to like move pockets to boss them around when yeah mm-hmm. yeah so it's 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 nice to work with like people around you know because like this i do believe that uh, uh i do believe in the sense that uh, there is this possibility of growth of ideas and uh, uh execution of an idea uh, better when there are like like minded and unlike minded in a single group so when you talk about uh when you talk about like a collective like uh, especially like my collective of like kurat like kurat collective uh uh we do all 
want to paint in streets we do all uh have this uh, idea of like you know like we want to paint in streets and like we are street artists we are like you know graffiti writers and uh, but uh like whenever there's this uh process of like you know idea generation everybody has like vastly different ideas everybody has like vastly different uh uh uh, things that they want to like approach it and our conversations on like how we want to do it last for like hours and hours it usually ends up with like people like getting like annoyed with each other and and I feel like that's 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 a good process in a sense because uh, uh, everybody puts their ideas out and a lot of like uh, uh, like unimportant or like irrelevant or like uh, uh, things that don't work don't necessarily uh, make it at the end and uh, uh, it's it's good to have like these all of these like extra opinions on it uh, whether or not it might be like uh, uh, good or not is a different thing altogether but uh, like the, the whole idea that uh, this hive mind mentality of ours that uh, it's 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 focused on uh, it's focused on like uh, there needs to be individual representation of artists because every artist is different. So my work is different to like other artists in my collective and it's, 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 it's different in how they approach art and how they make it. And it's completely fine. And there needs to be individual representation, but there also needs to be like a group representation at the same time. So that is one of the focus things that we are focusing on is, uh, uh, everybody needs to have individual uh, rep uh, like uh, representation but also uh, the whole group needs to be represented in a different limelight and, uh, and we do uh, approach it in, in that dif in that direction and uh, see like uh, what are the different ways not just painting on walls but like what are the different mediums that we can associate with different styles that we can associate with and uh, uh, different projects that we can associate with and I think like having uh, like different people from different backgrounds uh, brings different ideas uh, in the forefront and it always keeps it exciting interesting and you know like it, 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 it's all it's usually like exciting in that way <clears throat> I mean, um, so because you also work as an individual artist sometimes like mm -hmm. you do some projects individually um, how do you differentiate okay, your project say i'll do it on my own or and your project that i'll do with the collective banera um, um it... i mean for me uh most of the projects that i do here in kathmandu whether it be uh, an art project or a commission work or anything it's it's never by myself i usually have uh, my guy sort of like uh, being part of it uh, actively or like inactively either if it's if it's a project that i'm doing like Kathmandu Triennale, let's say like i worked in, uh, i made a couple of murals for Kathmandu Triennale, and it was uh, it was uh, a project that i did but uh, there were like uh, crucial uh, like uh, i mean like my uh, collective and like my people that were around helped me a lot to get that uh, a wall across and you know like to do those work and uh, and so at certain times uh, there is a project and it's never mine or like the other person's it's our project so uh, usually it's like that where we do a wall and and i think it's it's dictated by like uh, who is more excited about doing that project or how we divide the work among ourselves and how do we do it in that sense and uh, for me individually like uh, when uh, whenever uh, like uh, my individual work is usually when I do like international trips and uh, mm, I think mm, those are the only times when I like work individually but then again there are like volunteers to help me like fill in flat colors so, um, so yeah I'm not sure <laughs> um, talking about like like working with a collective argument about like, how you guys spend so many time so much of time um, brainstorming ideas you know? um, coming to that Rubita did ask while doing street art how do you come up with ideas um, because like no one tells you what to paint in that wall so certain idea how do you do it and how hard it is 
uh, well, uh, uh, painting in the streets, street Mansani. I think for me, it's more about uh, like there are different ways. Like, well, uh, one is like if I'm invited to a place to paint. So mm -hmm. if I'm invited to a place to paint uh, international trips, Mansani, or like in like street art festivals. There is always this uh, uh, brief sort of given, like uh, sort of the like concept note that is given, that is very like broad, uh, that gives you a lot of like leeway on like what you want to say or like how you want to do it, um, and I kind of usually uh, take that in because of course there is a curatorial aspect to a street art festival and I want to um, sort of respect that. Uh, approach and that's that's why I sort of like take care of like the the concept note and make sure it's part of uh, it's part of my work but uh, uh, saying that that just becomes a starting point for me to like brainstorm in ideas on how I want to do so like for example uh, for example the wall that I did in Delhi in Lodi Art District was uh, an interesting one because uh, the whole uh, aspect of it was about uh, you know, technically, like talking about Delhi as a city itself, you know, and uh, for me, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to uh, work, uh, work and talk about like the city and the river itself and the pollution that was happening at that time period. So I ended up taking the, the Yamuna River as a, as a grounds for like, uh, to make a mural in that time. Just that's the sharing screen, really. Yeah, yeah, I think you should. Mm, yeah, it's high time. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> I do. Me too. Me too. Me too. All right. Anybody like Dikhira, sir? Ah, Dikhira, sir. All right. Uh, okay, yeah, this one. This is the work that I was talking about. So this particular work. Uh, was the one that I did in Delhi, and one of the the pieces that I, I uh, like really like, like that I'm very proud of, and so the whole uh, concept revolved around uh, uh, concept revolved around like uh, the pollution in Delhi and like Delhi itself as a city, uh, which is like heavily polluted, and like in conjunction to this uh, like Yamuna River, so. Uh, while researching about Delhi and the Yamuna River, I was very interested in the fact that there was this article that that, that uh, uh, because a lot of people were like disposing of their pets, especially like carps and like goldfish and their pet fish into the river. It was decimating the uh, the, the native uh, species of uh, fishes, and like now there's a lot of like carps uh, in that river and. That was uh, an interesting idea for me uh, because uh, golden fish is something that we associate as a pet, as this like naive little fish that you keep in a small glass bowl in your house and uh, you uh, you know decorate your space with. And but here, this there are like bigger repercussions environmentally that are happening. Uh, and that was interesting for me because like a small thing like that can have such an impact. So. Uh, so using the gold like goldfish and then like using images of a plastic bottle and putting it in context with each other juxtaposing it with like each other uh, uh, was was kind of like uh, interesting and uh, like you know like uh, interesting for me because like we are talking about like pollution uh, from a very like man made uh, man made like uh, uh, like non living uh, aspect but there are like living uh, 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 effects like uh, things that we are doing like we are introducing new species into uh, into uh, environment and uh, that kind of like made uh, sense for me to like paint plus also I wanted to paint a fish so yeah. Um, can you show us any other artwork that you've done in Zeni? And... Uh, so uh, this this probably a uh, couple of uh, the hmm. Yeah, uh, okay. This is interesting to do. So this, this, I mean, like this couple of walls that I've done, like everything has a, 
uh, uh, like a conceptual story to it. And I make sure that there is. So this one in like Goa that I did for Serendipity Art Festival, especially the Young Subcontinent project. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting because I had to paint this like massive wall uh, within the time span of like, I don't know, seven days, eight days. And it was fun because I was given this like, uh, high, this um, uh, crane, not like a crane that you would use to paint walls, but like to clean, to make, move like crates and boxes and stuff. And they built a small uh, box around me and the, there was an operator moving me up and down while I was painting the thing. So, so there's always interesting instances where like I'm uh, put uh, in situations like, yeah, this, this is in, this is in Coimbatore, uh, one of the first uh, collaborations, associations with like Start India. <clears throat> so yeah, every other, every other wall, every other um, piece that I do has a uh, story to it, has, uh, has a, uh, you, uh, and sometimes, most of the times there is, uh, there is this sense of consciousness of uh, what place that I'm painting in, like, you, like this, where this was painted painted in a forestry school uh, in Assam in Guwahati, and uh, uh, you know, uh, talking about like these majestic animals, so I wanted to present them as like as big as I can with all of their glory. So, so yeah, like things like that, instances like that, you know. <clears throat> Okay, um, talking about your work, I know. Um, so if if we go from the start, we see that you've you've changed your styles, and then like mm -hmm. oily, it's more about juxtaposition form at mm -hmm. Um So do you, do you have any specific reason to have that passage of style change? Um. So. Uh... At the beginning, I was more, so I wanted, I always wanted to talk about like, uh, like this contradiction and this like, this uh, difference, but still like coming together. So at the beginning, Masaini, I was painting a lot of like faces, uh, like black and white faces with like Ranjana calligraphy, calligraphy on the face. And that was my sort of like uh, conceptual, uh, the concept behind it was that I, um, this whole idea of like biological evolution versus intellectual evolution, how we are biologically evolved to a certain degree, but intellectually uh, we are like, we have evolved uh, in a certain way. So the face, black and white face representing uh, this uh, uh, like cave dwelling people, but like the calligraphy representing the intellectual evolution that we have gone through like, uh, with, like uh, with, with the passage of time. And that was a uh, that was a stylistic approach that I was working with, and I used that uh, in a lot of works that I did at the beginning. And uh, it was uh, interesting for me at the beginning. And like uh, the more I kept doing it, the more I started feeling like there's no more to say about it with this particular way. You know, I'm just like I, I just felt like I was repeating myself over and over again, and I did not like that. I just felt uh, like there's still more to say, there's still more that I want to say, and this particular style is not uh, uh, letting me to, to do it. And uh, it, was a, it, was, it was an interesting uh, time for me because uh, I knew that that particular style had uh, uh, given me a lot of attention as a street artist, as, as, as an artist who was like coming up and painting like this, like words on the street. And uh, when you look at it, when you look at street art as a as a as a as a style, I mean, there's uh, there's this definite uh, focus on like there needs to be a style that is representation of your work. You need to have this uh, uh, particular things in your work that when people look at it, they know that it's your work, and it has to do a lot with like uh, um, short time span of like people being able to look at your work when they are like commuting or like when they are like passing by on the street. So I was very drawn whether or not I should leave this style or not, or whether I should continue this style or not. And um, realizing the fact that it was limiting me to uh, not say a lot of things. 
uh, made me uh, uh, stop doing in that style and, and kind of move to this different style that I'm doing of like uh, juxtaposition and sort of like collage effect. And that's, uh, and I think that has brought me a lot of uh, leeway in like, what are the things, the things that I want to talk about because now I can just like uh, uh, bring images together that uh, like in, are contrasting and make sense as a concept and just like put them together and have like design sort of sense to it as well. And and uh, it's 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 given definitely given me a lot of leeway and like uh, possibilities on like the different ideas that I want to talk about, not just like this uh, biological evolution, but just like intellectual evolution. Um, and talking about like the more style, ma, there is a particular. At one point, you drew a lot of animals in your paintings and a street ma. Um, uh -huh. As it does, it has to do with your personal interest, or like because I know you always wanted to be a reptile specialist. So, uh huh. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, like animals have always, always been like an interesting topic for me. Like, of course, like the whole pathology thing that we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when I was like, uh, when I was like young, I really admired like Steve Irwin and like. You know, I wanted to become a herpetologist and like work in the central zoo and like go to like uh, parks and like work with animals and all of that. And I, 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 either I was going to do that or I was going to uh, be an artist and I decided to be an artist. But there's always this fascination with animals that is still there. And uh, they, do make, uh, into, they do make it into my work uh, in different ways. Um, I did uh, like five murals and two paintings uh, for the Kathmandu Triennale project, for the Kathmandu Triennale, and uh, they were specifically like the major element of them were like animals. And um, one, it was because I wanted to paint animals. Number two, because it made sense conceptually as well, because I was talking about seven deadly sins, or I would like to call it seven moderate sins. Uh, so every animal represented different sins, and uh, it was uh, it was fun. it was fun to bring in like these uh, uh, conceptual elements uh, like within the space and uh, like represent it in a different way, not just as like saying like look at this animal, it's like quite beautiful, but also like there is a lot of uh, conceptual story behind it and how uh, it means more than just a beautiful animal. It represents different things as well. You know? mm -hmm. Um, and talking about your personal interest, there has been a question on Facebook from Ramita Maharajan Trista. How often do you use your family as an inspiration for your art? Uh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> they are not inspirational at all. <laughs> not quite. But, you know, like, I mean, like, my family has been quite supportive uh, in my art practice, whether it be, like, from the beginning to decide to study art or to, like, take on this like very exp like new form of like art medium uh, they have been very uh, <clears throat> supportive but i don't think i <laughs> take inspiration for my from my family in you know in a very uh, in a very visual way i think it's more about like uh, how i take inspiration from the different you know mentality and the you know aspects of it but you you don't usually talk about your personal stuff in your art do you um, not necessarily, not necessarily. I don't, I don't. Um, so there's next question from Niroz Maharzan on Facebook. What are the conceptual and visual context and significance of the mural in your background? In, yeah, of, of this one. So, oh, of that one. Um, yeah, yes, of yeah. this one. So, so, uh, so I recently... Uh, I also because that you did during the lockdown, ma, no? Yeah. And you did other two art projects during the lockdown. So if you can also like talk about it, talk a bit about it. Uh -huh. So, uh, so this is uh, this is something that came up with. Uh, I should probably move so that there's a better visual on it. So, uh, so there was this uh, uh, initiative uh, initiative called Home. Uh, 
home uh, like home street art like mural fest like mural festival that that was happening all over the world i think it just ended a week ago uh, a week ago yeah sunday i think so uh so uh, the whole concept was that we as street artists are uh, devoid of you know like painting in streets so like uh, let's do a street like home based like uh, project and and i sort of like found it interesting uh, mainly because i was like bored and like you know i wanted to like paint as well but also like it was an interesting uh, uh, initiative to be part of like so i decided to do it so this particular work uh, so the concept brief that was given was like uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about like uh, corona and like the covid-19 and how it has impacted our lives and how like you know like environmentally it has impacted and uh, so this design came up uh, that i came up with was the result of probably eight to nine designs probably six, seven, eight, six, seven designs that I did and I rejected. So I finally ended up with this that I wanted to do. And it's, it's not a new design. It's a, it was a design that I was working with before because I'm doing a series of paintings uh, uh, based on like mudras, you know, like different mudras and like using hands as symbolisms and what they represent. So, so I am still doing a painting, uh, a small painting uh, uh, called like uh, based on a, uh, Karuna Mutra and this is like based on like Abhay Mutra based on like the hand gesture itself and it made sense for me to paint this because um, Abhay Mutra is all about like you know like uh, fearlessness and sort of patience and protection and all of that so uh, those words kind of resonated with this particular uh, time period of uh, like you know scare factor with uh, corona and like you know all of that so i decided like it's 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 good to paint that uh in this setting you know by the way it's still not complete i still have to complete this one there and and the other two projects that you did during the lockdown do you want yeah so uh so uh at the beginning so me and my collective uh uh, we decided that we are going to be stuck home for a certain period of time. So let's do a project where we are just, uh, you know, where we can use internet as a medium to get this thing done. And uh, so I, I was, uh, uh, so we decided with this uh, uh, project called Quarantine Whispers. So uh, it was all based in this idea of like, uh, of this game called telephone or Chinese whispers where somebody says something and the other person has to listen to it and it has, and that person has to explain that particular idea and like pass it on and <clears throat> and we did that project we recently finished that project like uh, two three days ago you, um, everybody should like check that out on like our core art collective for Instagram so so what we did was like we had like four groups and everybody um, so it started off with like one prompt and the main artist started off a work and that artist described that work in 20 seconds to the other person and based on that description they had to make a work in 24 hours and uh, continue the same process again of like calling somebody else up in, in that group and describing it within 20 seconds and like finishing the work in 24 hours and we did that and we had like uh, including ourselves, there were like uh, 36, 36 people who got involved in that project. And uh, so it was fascinating to see, you know, like how an artwork changes because of this whole communication factor, how, how well you are able to uh, uh, pass, in, pass information to the other person. And it's quite relevant at this time as well, because uh, there's a lot of like, uh, like um, news and information that are going out that kind of get changed and kind of, uh, get uh, misinformed, you know, and uh, people end up understanding it differently and like uh, people take it in different ways. So it was necessary for us to uh, do this project uh, just to uh, keep this like positive moment of up, but also uh, to uh, say that uh, even though everybody is like uh, quarantined in their homes, everybody's like in lockdown, we're still connected with each other. 
and whether it be like here or whether it be in like some other place because we had like parts like participants not just from like Kathmandu but uh, in like different parts of Nepal and also from different parts of the of the world as well and so that was quite interesting for us to do like as quarantine whispers um so we are almost running out of time so i'm just gonna share like few more questions i know um mm -hmm. including one um from rubita like how often do you paint and uh this much i'll add have you one when, when was the last time you painted for yourself Panera? um i uh i don't normally paint as much as i would want to it's usually uh, it's uh, it's usually uh, with like different projects that are coming in that i associate with that makes me uh, paint and that that's that's an interesting question because a couple of a uh, couple of months ago like probably 3 4 months ago i was uh, like I was doing a lot of like mural works and commission works and everything. And then I started realizing that I'm like, you know, I haven't started like, I hadn't painted a canvas in like years and years. So I decided that I, I'm going to start painting canvases, you know, and uh, that became a starting point for me to say that, okay, so it's not commissioned by anybody. It's not part of a project that we are doing. It's something that I'm doing by myself. So, so like, and that led me to the whole like the the mudra series and the another series that I'm doing with like uh, like insects and like uh, juxtaposing them with like different elements and yeah, I mean like that. So that ended up becoming like my starting point for like say I want to do like something for myself, and it has uh it has opened up uh. Mm, it has opened up this uh, um, process for me in a, in a way because I'm now experimenting. I'm thinking of experimenting different with like mediums and like as in like not just doing canvases, but like using photographs and painting on photographs and like how does that replicate uh, and you know, using like replicable prints and uh, working on top of prints and like and also this concept of like this urban decay and like how and using it not just in a sense of, uh, you know, painting, but in a very architectural format and uh, would and how interesting would it be to take that concept and sort of like make it into something that I don't necessarily do like a painting, you know, like turn it into something else. So, so that, uh, be, that has become like my process. So like I usually try and keep a couple of things in my head so that I have like something to do, you know, whenever I'm like free or not. Um, and there's a question. I think both Saksham Raja Shakya and Anes Tako, um, I think a uh, similar question. Basically, during your early career phase or during your beginning phase, uh, you have to say, how did you, what were the critics and that you had to face? And how did it help? um you in growing and learning and mm -hmm. Arkosa, can you mention a few of the rejection you've gotten in your art journey and how has it motivated you so criticism or rejection let's say because anything like anymore so criticism there was this particular criticism that i faced like um i think uh during the beginning years of art lab it was made by somebody i'm not going to point it out not from art lab but like from uh, from outside based on a work that I did on a wall. And it was a very uh, uh, good criticism, as in uh, it criticized my work uh, for, being, uh, for being a copy. And uh, that was a very good, uh, uh, very good, very interesting moment for me because uh, at that time period, it, uh, that comment, uh, that particular comparison and comment made me, uh, affected me very much that uh, I was seriously doubting whether or not uh, becoming a street artist or like, working on streets was the right medium for me or not. And uh, it did impact me a lot. It did impact me a lot. And, um, and I, was, I, was, I was thinking to myself, like, am I doing the right thing or not? Or, like, should I be continuing doing this thing or not? And uh, I let it like soak in for like with myself. And at the same time, we were supposed to do uh, uh, an exhibition in Alliance France 
So I, and, and that was in like Te Kuma of the I think. <clears throat> we were supposed to do an exhibition there. And uh, my takeaway from that uh, criticism was that it definitely like pulled me down. It definitely made me uh, this, uh, you know, I was like sad to hear about it. I, I was seriously doubting my, uh, my potential and my uh, artistic career in a sense. And, uh, but uh, how I took it in a sense was I, uh, this is an example that I give to my friends as well. Uh, I, I've given to a couple of people as well, uh, saying that, you know, like, you know, uh, whenever you are doing something, like people will throw like rotten, like tomatoes, rotten, like potatoes and stuff like that to you. And it's fine, like it will come to you at times. But like, if you really want to push forward from it, you take those rotten potatoes, you take those rotten tomatoes, like uh, cut away the rotten parts, take the good parts and sort of like make it, turn it into a stew, like tarkari and sort of like feed it to the people and make sure that it's a good one because uh, if it's a good one, they would potentially like it. And uh, that is basically what I did as in like, I got that criticism, but use that as a motivation to come up with like new body of works and that is how the whole series of like portraits with like calligraphy on the face came about you know like and uh, and uh, to be honest i'm very thankful for that person who made that comment <clears throat> yeah any rejection rejections uh, rejections were at the beginning where um uh i whenever when i was starting off like with like with uh, like drawing and painting during my, like before uh, KU, I was doing a lot of drawings and sort of like wanted them to be uh, like seen in like gallery spaces in Tamil. So like I took drawings and took it there and like, people rejected it. And that was like one of the biggest rejections that I've had. And that also became a, a crucial uh, point for me because from that point onward, I started using street art and started painting on the streets because rejection from uh, galleries meant I wasn't able to show them in galleries, but like there's the street sphere where I could paint, you know, like I don't necessarily need permission for that. Um, and there's a question from Karma Tashi. Do you face artist block? If so, how do you overcome it? Uh, artist block, I do face it. Uh, I mean, like this is a good example <laughs> because like for this, I probably had to like go through six, seven designs and and I think it's 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 one of the biggest problems that we face. Um, for me personally, I think uh, mm, like helping, like having uh, inspiration around is a good good way. You know, like uh, things uh, like things that you look at, like uh, going back to the basics. You know, like things that inspired you to like start off is a good way to do it as a as well, but also like creative block uh, sense Mazzaini. I think uh, we do have this tendency to say that um, I, I don't have any, any inspiration, so I'm not gonna paint anything or I'm not gonna make anything. So when, when I'm gonna paint whenever an, an inspiration hits me and I think that's a very wrong way to take it. I think inspiration should start at 10 o'clock in the morning or like end at five in the evening. So it should be a it should be a day-to-day -day process whether or not you are inspired or not doesn't really matter if you keep on working at it i think that becomes a major thing for you to like keep making works whether or not they are good is a different thing but yeah i think like having inspirational uh, works around uh, having people around that you feel inspired from like listening to like other people reading books i don't know i mean like the, I, i'm sure there are different ways to do it um and how do you actually start the whole process of making a mural or making your art on sunny mm -hmm. which is something mm -hmm. i ask and i wanted to ask that again eh? uh -huh. so uh, what is your process for mural like and then do you think about the messages you want to convey first and then search mm -hmm. for adequate images or um mm -hmm. how do you achieve that interaction between form and content that's i think it majorly starts with like uh, the wall you know mm -hmm. So where I am painting, what's, what's the wall like? Uh, uh, what's the dimension of the wall? What, are the, uh, what is the context of the wall? Where, where is this wall? Like what are the things around it? You know, that things definitely do, uh, uh, do play a major role in like what I want to paint on walls. 
um, after that, I think it goes very much into this research phase of like uh, reading articles, reading uh, relevant information on that same topic. But there is definitely this sense of like beginning idea that I want to achieve. Uh, uh, I would probably want to talk about a certain idea or an issue or like something that is relevantly uh, important for me. Uh, whether it be like the evolution factor or whether it be like the environmental factor or anything, I would focus on, on that and sort of like uh, zone in on that and sort of like read basically research. I think like that's, that's where most of the ideas, most of the directions that come in. And after that, uh, if I've like fixed on a certain idea, then, then it's a matter of like designing. And I'm, I'm very like strict when it comes to like the designing factor. Uh, I want to, I, I, I get like exact measurements of the wall. I make exact uh, uh, like layouts uh, in Photoshop and, and I make most of the night among 80 to 90% of the decisions of what goes on the wall are made during the design phase. Uh, remaining 10, 20 percent changes with context to like how the wall is and like the different elements that are on the wall but like uh, 80 percent to 90 percent of the designs are like elements in the design are sort of like focused during the designing phase and it's it's a matter of like you know it's a matter of like uh, it's kind of like uh, there are different elements that i can add to it there are of course different ways that i can go with that design but what is the design that i want to like you know go with and uh, I mean like a design can be like uh, multitudes of multitude of variations of that particular work and it's it's a matter of like so at the beginning it's very chaotic it's like I add in a lot of elements I play around with different elements and slowly and steadily I start removing it or adding it adding elements and uh, and I usually let it sit for uh, like a day or two and kind of like reflect back on it. I usually have it as by like desktop background and like kind of like see it from time to time again and like see if it works or not. And I do definitely make like few changes later on. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically how I do it. Um, all right, and then. <laughs> and then there's a question from I am random under uh, under AF, uh, as an artist or a freelancer, how important is it to sell your work, and to what extent? Uh, so, I mean, uh, it's not necessary. I think it's it depends upon where you want, what you want to be, what you want to be, or like where you want uh, your art to be in state, you know, in situation. So I mean, it's not necessarily important. I mean, like I haven't sold. Uh, I mean, like I don't usually sell my work. Uh, but you get commission. Most people, hmm? But you Sorry? get commission for work, Nita. I do get commissions, but I'm talking specifically about like canvases and paintings. I probably but, sold about four. Five. I'm just gonna um, add, like, but I think he meant as a street art method, funny. Like when when he's uh, talking about sell yourself, he probably meant sell yourself as in like sell myself as an artist. Yeah, yeah selling yourself as a street artist to get those commission work. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's good to be, I mean, like, as I said, it's, uh, it's necessarily about like how you want to be like perceived and like how you want, uh, how you, how you want, uh, where you want yourself to be seen. If you want to see yourself, uh, like shoulder to shoulder with all of these like international artists, top notch international, uh, street artists, you definitely, you need to, uh, making some effort to be relevant in certain degrees, you know, I mean, like, I think that's crucial. Uh, but like there are a couple of artists who are fine with doing like uh, private commissions and like doing their work and like making amazing work. Uh, and But still not like, you know, like not necessarily wanting to be uh, like selling themselves. And uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of personal choice, I think, like, where do you want to see yourself? And uh, I, I think it's it's completely up to them. Ani, this one is from Sabrina. I'm just, I'll say, I'm just asking <clears throat> a question because we're running out of time. So mm -hmm. this question is, what is your dream project? Uh, dream, dream project, huh? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. I mean, like there are a couple of projects I, I haven't really thought of, thought of like, a, like, you know, um, things that I say, like, you know, like, okay, this is what I want to do as a dream, dream project. Uh, there are a couple of projects uh, in my head that I really want to do uh, that aren't necessarily based in like uh, painting or like drawing or like street art in a sense, but like still uh, be very in a street sphere, you know, like urban landscape uh, association. But uh, maybe I, I'm I'm guessing probably it has to do where. Uh, a project that is accumulation of all of the things that I'm interested in, like street art, or like, you know, all of the different, you know, things exactly. that I'm interested in. Yeah, probably that. Okay, um, so I think we will end the session with one last question, Tara. You know, Tara, before I said ask that question, I'm just going to say that even if we are done with your session, you can stay for an after party because and then ask Kiran whatever you want to. Um, mm -hmm. Tara, before we go, last question that I will ask you is if you have to choose between a spray can and your laptop where you design, which one will be? Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, probably spray can, I guess, you know, like spray can, oh no, wait. But I do a lot of work on my laptop as well. Mm, huh. Probably, probably spray can, I would say probably spray can. Sticking to the roots, yeah, spray can, yeah. But I'm sure, I hope it's a good one though. Uh, um, so okay, last thought I say a question Facebook ma um, difference between commercial art and any that can be bought in the shops of Tamil and caters to elites. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, the and the one that adorns wall of exhibition and attract dollars. What do you have to say to those who mm -hmm. look down upon artworks that are sold in places like Tamil? So I think it means like, how what do you say uh -huh. to like commercial art in Tamil ma gallery ma bit? Uh -huh. so? Uh -huh. places like Siddharth are in Kalderma which is so differences and what do you have mm -hmm. to tell those two people mm -hmm. who are like Tamil Kaurdis are they now when you are like mm -hmm. so uh, I mean at the beginning I was also one of those people who were like like Tamil Go artwork is like just like cheap art you know like it's just like replicated and just like made over and over again like um, and I was one of those people, but I did kind of thought about, I did kind of like think about like, I mean, like, why is there such an evidence, uh, evidence of like these many artists doing these many works in like, and why is it uh, like selling as well, you know, like, uh, like, uh, I mean, it sells, you know, in a way it sells and uh, it's, it's, it, I think like dishing on it, uh, just, uh, I mean, like dishing on it feels like uh, it comes like it, it just feels like people coming from the top and saying that, OK, this is not art. What I make is art, you know, like I feel that is very wrong. But uh, I did kind of research about it and and I feel like uh, all of the uh, uh, I think like uh, the works um, that are sold in like paintings, like landscape paintings and like you know, cityscape paintings that are sold in like these Tamil galleries uh, makes sense in a certain ways because it ticks all of the boxes, you know. Uh, composition is like laid out perfectly, you know, like there's like complementary colors, uh, like there's a human element, there's like aspect of scale. All of the design sense are like on it, like from A to G, you know, and like, and I think that's, that's, that's crucially important on it because like it's, uh, it makes sense in that way and i'm and and i do uh and i do respect uh, the person who came up with this like idea of like uh making uh, like these like uh, coming up with this composition of like uh like uh, stylistically and color wise and everything like and just like kind of like making it and uh, replicating it and and i think that's uh, that's fine as well because like you don't just look at look at it from an artistic perspective but you look at look at it from a uh, livelihood perspective as well some people just like uh, make their day to day lives like you know necessities met with that you know and uh, 
and it's 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 fine you know like it's it's not it's more than just it's more than just art for them it's it's a means of livelihood and i think there are a couple of things in this world uh, that mean more than just making art you know like you know making sure that you're fed and your family fed is important and uh, like uh, uh, some people some there are some stuck up people who think like gallery like tamil landscape paintings are like shit and i um, i mean like it's it's their opinion and it doesn't really uh you know I mean, it doesn't really like matter a lot okay so thank you thank that was the question from sashi busan guru ani mm-hmm. by saying that i think i'm gonna close this session so thank you kiran for being thank you. here and robic ko questions as of which i think um, have you compiled all your work com- somewhere that we can see kiran doesn't compile his work at all i can answer that for you <laughs> like kaam sidhe ko ek varsha pachi rakhna thalcho le instagram ma hai na and uh, robic specifically meant birgans ko mural that you did raisa jun like before we started the session we were talking about how you went to birgans and nobody knew about it so uh-huh. they- so but one of the question that i really want to um ask is why do you not compile this work i don't get it why people don't document their work or archive their work on any portfolio banana padta hai na for yourself like, i do have a portfolio but it is probably uh, it probably doesn't not have work, like from from 2 3 years yeah, it's not updated and the Yeah, like, it's not updated like most of the relevant works are not updated and uh, i don't know i mean like uh, i make sure that i put it out on social media and that becomes as a pushing factor for me to say that okay like final image it's in sayo you know so that i put it out and that i can use for my portfolio as well so i don't know i mean like it's usually because there is this backlog of works that i haven't published yet i mean like there's so many works that i still haven't put, like put it out on like social media uh, and i'm thinking like oh you put you were at you so i'll post it in that way and it never happens and yeah i mean like probably instagram is like uh, a good uh, place for to for most of my works i did i used to put a lot of work in facebook but it's not i don't do that anymore i moved to instagram and instagram uh yeah i don't know but also like korat collective kuma cha so like it's a good excuse for people to visit our like instagram korat collective as well you guys don't even update instagram korat collective i'm assuming that our facebook live is done rupak is it done facebook ma bond bhayo so that we can open floors mm. but in case thaina bhancha i just want to add um this video this conversation will be up on our on the youtube satya media go satya media sat satya go uh, so in case you missed it anybody uh, misses it uh, you can also always go back to it um follow satya for more interesting talks follow um, on instagram and facebook of course follow kiran on instagram he usko handle se h11235 ho um and then core ko bani core ko se core underscore arts so collective um, yeah. underscore sai na i thought it was underscore underscore, underscore tha, but then again it, i mean it's like core art collective art uh, so art collective ani this which then yes thank you so much everybody for tuning in i hope it was wonderful ani thank you kiran so we'll thank end you. yeah and for the soup as well as uh Robic is saying as well for the soup for her all of the writing like written work and everything yeah yeah i update all of my stuff except blog <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the after party shuru karum ab i guess yeah